If you're looking to have user authentication in your .NET Maui app, there's a good chance you've looked at Azure Active Directory B2C. Now, usually when you use B2C, you use a client package called MSAL. MSAL isn't available for .NET Maui apps just yet, but the good news is you don't need it. You can actually get your apps authenticating with B2C without using MSAL at all. I'm gonna show you how, let's take a look. So I have got here uh, a full stack solution using uh, ASP.NET Core Web API. Uh, I've got a shared project that's got some shared types in it. In fact, this is just the standard weather forecast that comes out of the box with this with this ASP.NET Core API template. Uh, and I've got .NET Maui B2, uh, .NET Maui UI. You can see that I've got my B2C config set up here uh, in my app settings.json. Um, I've actually got the API running here already and I've got ngrok running so I can tunnel back to it. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Let's take a quick look at B2C. Okay, So this is my uh, Azure AD B2C tenant. I've got a couple of, uh, in fact I'll show you the user flow. I've got the user flow here, uh, B2C1, Suzy, that's sign up and sign in. Comes out the box. I've tweaked it a little bit but you know this is all pretty vanilla. I've got my app registrations here where I've got uh, my an app registration for my API and an app registration for the client. And this is how you, you, you should set up your, your B2C uh, and the, the API exposes a scope that when you request a token on the client, it requests that scope. That then sets the audience on the token to be the, the ID of the API, uh, which you can see that we've got here, this client ID, which is different from the, the app client ID, and that's going to allow the API to authenticate that token. Now. As I mentioned, MSAL not quite available yet. If we have a look here, there's an open issue for it for Maui. Uh, they're, they're nearly there, most of this is done, uh, but there's some underlying issues, not actually with Maui, but with the underlying platforms that they're working on. They're nearly there, but we're not there yet. But you don't need it, right? And the reason you don't need it is because uh, Azure AD B2C is an almost OAuth2 and OIDC compliant uh, identity provider. I say almost because there's a couple of caveats. What I want to show you here is to see this endpoints link up here. Now you can see here that we've got some OAuth2 endpoints. Uh, now all you need to do to change these is, is put the policy name. Um, so if, if we look at the metadata document, this is the uh, what's called the discovery document. So I'm just going to go and pop this in a tab uh, here. I'm going to replace this policy name here with B2C1Suzy. Uh, and this is going to open up some things for us. Now the reason I say that this is almost compliant and not fully is because uh, the authority here uh, is actually the the policy. So in Azure AD B2C, in OAuth terms, the authority is the policy, but the issuer is the tenant. Now really those two are supposed to match, the issuer is supposed to be the authority. Uh, in B2C they don't. Um, that's not really a big deal, but the problem with that is that, that you can't use a package called a OIDC client, which is what you would normally use for this kind of stuff, um, but OIDC client will throw an error because those two don't match. But again, that's fine, we, we can work around that. Um, now I'm going to show you how. It's actually, it's actually not that hard, right? So uh, it's a bit tricky, you have to jump through some hoops, but you can make it work. So what I've done here in my Maui program, uh, the first thing that I've done is uh, I've added this auth handler. I'll just show you this. What the auth handler does is, uh, in fact, you, you would need this if you're using mCell as well. But what this is going to do is this is going to intercept our uh, HTTP requests and it's going to add a, an authentication header called bearer uh, with a value of the token, the token that we're going to we're going to get in a minute from B2C, uh, and that is going to allow our course that API to be authenticated. So I've added that that auth handler. You're going to need to do that anyway. Really, really cool feature actually. Um, the next thing I've done is I've set up uh, an authenticated uh, HTTP client. This can be in, with a name here called authenticated client. This is just a const on my auth service, um, which is here. The reason I've done that is just so I can uh, refer to it throughout my app without worrying about typos. Uh, it's got a base address, which at the moment is my ngrok address, which is tunneling back to my API. Uh, and I'm adding that auth handler as a handler. Um, so that means that I can inject this named HTTP, HTTP client anywhere. Well, I actually inject the HTTP client factory, uh, and then I generate that named client, and that's going to give me a client that's got the, the token for my, my B2C uh, uh, token on it. Um, and I've also got an unauthenticated client as well, which we're going to use in a minute, and I'm going to show you why we're going to need that. And then setting up some B2C options. This is just a, a type that I've created here. Um, you know, it's nothing special, it's just got some values in it, uh, but we've got the domain of the, the tenant, the client ID, the policy, and then some scopes. Now, <clears throat> this is the scope from the API that I've exposed here, and this is specifically the scope that we need to request if we want the audience on that token to match the client ID of the API, which is what we need if the API is going to validate that token. 
I'm also requesting offline access. <clears throat> the reason I'm requesting offline access is that that's going to give us a refresh token. That means once the user has interactively logged in, we can then go and request a token on their behalf when, when their access token expires without them needing to log in again. <clears throat> and OpenID is just a standard scope which gives us information about the user. So this is going to allow us to get an ID token. And then the last thing is the redirect URI. Now the redirect URI is using a custom URL scheme here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, in a URL scheme, you normally uh, start with the, the protocol. So with HTTPS, for example, that tells, that tells us that that's the protocol. FTP, UDP, these can be other schemes. This is a custom scheme. And the re reason we're using that is that that is registered with the operating system so that after we've authenticated, we're going to be redirected back to our app. I'm not going to go through the details of registering this in your mail app but you need to do it in the platforms folder here there's different ways to do it for each platform so I've got a, a callback activity and I've added it to my manifest uh, in for iOS and Mac catalyst you add it to your info.plist and for Windows you add it to your package.apex manifest uh, I'm not going to go through how to do those but I will give you a link to this repo you can have a look for yourself and then adding these options uh, so that I can inject them uh, where I'm going to need them which is going to be in my auth service uh, and then I've got an authenticator, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and the auth service, and then I'm adding my main page so I can inject all this into my main page. Let's have a look at the auth service. Uh, so in the auth service, <clears throat> let's talk a bit actually quickly about what the MSAL does. So the MSAL basically just wraps everything that we're doing here. It gives you a bunch of convenient methods and classes for accessing all this sort of stuff. But we're just going to do it ourselves. Um, so as I said here, I'm injecting my authenticator, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, my, my options uh, with my B2C information and the HTTP client factory um, and in here I'm using the unauthenticated client uh, because we haven't created the authenticated, authenticated client yet. Well, we, we actually have but we haven't added the, the token to it uh, but I don't need it to call B2C because we're going to do it all interactively and we're going to do it with the code, the, the authorization code and the token that we're going to get in a moment. Um, <clears throat> and uh, basically all I'm doing here when I call login async is I'm calling this authenticator and that is using the built-in uh, web authenticator that comes with uh, uh, .NET MAUI. And what that does is that opens a web browser that lets you use an, an OAuth2 login um, it, it, and it handles a bunch of stuff which we're going to see in a moment. Now the one caveat here is that the web authenticator doesn't currently work on uh, on Windows. Uh, but on the plus side, uh, Morton Nelson here has given us this package called WinUI Extensions. Um, and this includes uh, a custom uh, OAuth Web Authenticator which does work on Windows and it works really nicely. So um, if you look at my code here, you can see that I'm using, if Windows, I'm using the WinUI Extensions package Web Authenticator. For every other platform, I'm just using the built-in MAUI one. <clears throat> so that's kind of a nice workaround for now. Now what I'm also doing is that the web authenticator result um, returns a bunch of uh, properties. It returns a ref uh, an access token, refresh token, all that sort of stuff. Now that's not going to work with B2C. <clears throat> In fact, the ID token and the access token will, but it's not going to give you a refresh token because the interactive login, uh, which is the, gr the, the grant type um, that we're using there, doesn't actually return uh, uh, a refresh token. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the authorization code uh, and we're going to use the author authorization code to get the tokens that we want. So I'm using this uh, helper package here to generate the different URLs that you need to call B2C. So the first one is uh, the OAuth, so this is for the, the interactive authorization code login. We're calling the authorize endpoint. To get the token, we're calling the uh, the token endpoint. This is going to return one of the properties that we're going to get back from this is, is an authorization code. And we can use that authorization code here to get a token. That's going to include the ID token, the refresh token, and the access token. And then, of course, we can call uh, the token endpoint again, but using the grant type refresh token rather than authorization code. And that's going to give us a refresh token. So we're going to use all of these. So <clears throat> the, the, the authenticator, uh, rather than using um, you know the, the 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 token directly that returns. We're just going to get the code, and we're going to call that token endpoint, and that's going to let us get the the refresh token as well. Then we can return this login result type, um, and that is going to contain uh, all three of those properties. And this is just another one that I've defined here as well. So it's going to have the ID token, the access token, and the refresh token. Back to our auth service, so we can see that we're calling uh, we're calling the authenticator async option in our in our uh, authenticator type that we've defined here um, and then back from that we're getting the login result type that we want and then calling a method called set refresh token um, and that is storing it to secure storage one last hump you need to uh, hoop sorry you need to jump through for this um, you'll see here that there's actually an open issue 
in, in the Maui repo at the moment about secure storage not working on Mac. <clears throat> the reason for this is that to use secure storage, you need to set an entitlements.plist file, um, which I've actually done here. Um, I've done it for iOS and for Mac OS. Works for, uh, sorry, uh, on this branch it's not here, um, but it doesn't work on Mac OS, it doesn't work on Mac Catalyst at the moment. So uh, what you would need to do here if you want to persist the token is uh, just change this uh, and we can use a compiler directive here. So I'm going to go if Mac Catalyst um, else and then I'm going to go end if after this. Now what I'm going to do on Mac Catalyst instead is uh, I'm going to use uh, preferences, preferences.set and then uh, I can, of course, use preferences here uh, to store the token instead of uh, using secure storage. I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, now, <clears throat> one thing to bear in mind is that obviously that isn't as secure as using uh, uh, secure storage, but it is just as secure, if not more so, as using a web app, which just persists in browser storage anyway. So it's up to you to decide whether that's an issue. Um, it's it's probably not. It's not an issue for me. I, I am in fact going to um, put that code in before uh, I, I push this back up to my branch. So when you see the repo, that will be in there. You'll see how you can use this on macOS differently. Um, but but with all that done, all those hoops jump through, and there's there's really not a lot there. Um, this will work on every platform. It will work on Windows. It will work on macOS. It will work on iOS, and it will work on Android. So in fact, let's uh, just spin it up and give it a go, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to run this now on Windows. We'll see that this is going to give us a Windows app. Um, and uh, in fact, I should have showed you my main page here. Um, but on the main page, I've got a, a button called login button where you log in. And then after you log in, it's going to go off and call the API using your token. Uh, and it's going to go and get all those weather forecasts. And then I just display them here. Um, and if I go to my main page code behind, you can see that I'm injecting the auth service. I'm injecting the, the HTTP client factory and I'm generating that client using the authenticated client name here. And that is the one that injects the tokens with the requests. Uh, uh, it injects the, the token into the requests. Then when I click my login button, uh, all I'm doing is displaying an activity indicator, calling the login service, um, and then uh, getting the forecast from the API. As I said, I've already got the API running here, um, so I should just now be able to log in, and this is gonna um, take me to B2C. This part is working nicely. I'm just gonna log in uh, here, matt at go for goldman.com, using my super secure password, password123. Now, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to hit enter here and I'm going to be authenticated and it's going to ask me if I want to go back to the app. So you can see here that uh, it's trying to open this application. The reason it's trying to open this application is because that URL scheme on the redirect URL is associated with our Maui app. So I can click, click open. That should take us back to our app here. Uh, we can see that now it's just getting the data from the API. And I have hit a, uh, ah, so I've hit a slight issue here, uh, and this is an ngrok issue. Let's see if we can fix this. So we're getting a 502. Let's have a look why. So bad gateway, uh, and that's uh, HTTPS, localhost 7075. That's running, that's running. Ah, okay, uh, it's running on a different port. Super simple, we'll fix this up. So I'm just gonna change this, 5001. And I've now got a new ngrok URL, so I'm going to have to copy that. That's fine. Um, let me just stop this. I'll go back to my Maui program, update my ngrok URL here. Let's just run that again. So um, yeah, slight problem there is that I had an ngrok tunnel running to, my, to the wrong port. Super simple to fix up. So this is just going to start up again. And a uh, quick reminder, we've got a login button here that when I click on this, it takes us to B2C. Uh, which I can log in now and when I log in it asks us to go back to the app which is fine that's what we want to do so back to the app so now we're getting a, an unauthorized so the first thing that I want to do now in fact let's just run that again and let's go into the auth service uh, what I want to do is I want to have a look at <clears throat> the the information that we're getting back so I'm going to put a breakpoint here I'm just going to run this again log in to the app and we should hit our breakpoint. So let's have a look at this login result. So we've got tokens, we've got an access token, an ID token and a refresh token. Um, there is our access token. Let's just spin up Postman. Okay, so I should be able to go HTTPS colon slash slash local host colon 5001 slash weather forecast. 
Now at the moment I'm expecting a 401 because I'm not sending a token. Authorization, uh, I'm going to change this to bearer token. Get rid of that. Paste in the one that we got. Okay, so we're getting a 401. Now let's have a look and see if we can figure this out. Let's have a look at the token and let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. So we're going to use dev toys here. Uh, dev toys has automatically uh, pasted the token in for us. The audience is the right audience. This is the audience of the API. And if we go to app settings.json, uh, so it starts with BC6, ends with uh, 18A, BC6, 18A, that's the right token. Yeah, I'm running the wrong API, that's why. So we can see now this is on the original port that I was expecting. So I'm just going to kill that and spin it up again on the right port. Grab this URL. Jump back into here. <clears throat> fix that up. Run this again. Now this time uh, I am expecting this to work. Uh, so we're running the right instance of the API on the right port. Uh, we're going to get the right token and uh, it's going to have the right audience on it and this should work this time. So I'm going to click login. Back to B2C. Log in again. It's going to ask us if we want to go back to our app, which we do. And okay, we've hit this again, this breakpoint, and we can see that we've got uh, all the tokens there that we're expecting. Great. Uh, now it's asking me if I want to allow my app to access the internet. This is just my firewall. I'm going to allow it. It's my own app. That's fine. And there we go. And there are our forecasts. That is my .NET MAUI app running uh, Azure Active Directory B2C in my web API. And I have now successfully authenticated got a token, used that token to authenticate against the API and got some data back and all of that without using uh, the MSAL at all. Now, I'm going to share the repo below and you're welcome to, to use this and, and uh, use this approach in your, uh, in your .NET MAUI apps as well. But bear in mind that this is technical debt. This whole thing is technical debt if you use it. Super useful if you need to get over the line and you need Azure Active Directory B2C. Um, but bear in mind that this is all technical debt. So if you do this, keep an eye out for that MSAL package. And when it becomes available, ripple this out and just use MSAL instead. Thanks.